Mr. Connell, sir. JP Shimon with another situation update, if you may. Yes. Uh, your, your thoughts on the verdict and sentence in today, please? Um, well, section 108 is specific in what it says. Um, I thought that was the section should, that he should have been charged with initially, since that's what the statement said that he gave and it was voluntary. So um, we'll see if the charge of conspiracy holds at a higher level. That sounds like an appeal is in the offering. Ah, you're a smart fella. All right. Louis Cupid, the 46-year-old former jailer who was stationed at Her Majesty's prisons in Kingstown for much of his 12-year career, was found guilty by Chief Magistrate Rishon Brown on Tuesday, August 31st. He was sentenced to a concurrent jail term for his perceived role in murder-accused Veron Primus' 2019 jailbreak. <laughs> Connell explained part of the defense's strategy in this previously unreleased situation updates. So just a quick update, if you will, on the Louis Cupid case. Um, this morning, there was a ruling on the submission you made, uh, what was it, last week? Could you just update us as to, to how that all came up? It was not upheld. She overruled the submission. Okay. So continues. Okay. Uh, was a reason given for, for no. that particular ruling? No. Right. And, and that's the judge's prerogative whether or not to give yes. a reason to. Okay, beautiful. So um, I, I remember um, uh, leading up to that no case to answer submission, you did intimate in court that you may just have to summon uh, uh, maybe the commissioner of police or, or, or the prime minister himself for statements made and, and reported in, in local media with regards to um, this, this ever important diary. Uh, going forward, are, are you still of that mind? Yeah, well, um, the case continues. So I asked the magistrate if, on the motion of the court, they, that she would, she's minded to, to um, have the both individuals come to court. She said no. Um, there was no reason given. So um, I can now uh, do it as defense counsel. Um, I know lately the prime minister suffered an injury, and um, we don't condone that kind of. Behavior is very unfortunate. Um, that's very foolish for someone to do that. Um, I trust he's recovering. In the circumstances, I may retract my uh, having to summon summons him. I have nothing to, to prove really. If he's injured, he's injured. Um, however, I may still call the commissioner and issue a summons for him, but I'll make a decision. Next week, if that um, that diary, we may take a different course, uh, but <laughs> I don't really want to say too much on exactly what we're going to um, to do. Ultimately, the defense called Commissioner of Police Colin John, but his testimony did not sway Chief Magistrate Rashawn Brown. Okay, well, basically, the, the Crown's case based their case on evidence from other prison officers who was on duty at the time, including the superintendent of prisons. And also there was a CCTV footage, which wasn't really the best as it should, as it could have been, but it also provided some, some evidence for the prosecution. And to, to top it off, I would say, an admission, confession, we may call it, that Mr. Cupid made to Sergeant B. and Duncan. The crown, the, those are the, the, the elements of the of the evidence of the crown dependent on, basically. And the charges that Mr. Cupid were convicted of? Yes. They, well, they are, they are the conspiracy charge and the other one, the other one uh, permitting the prison to escape. In, in my view, they were the proper charge to be laid. I mean, defense counsel may have another view. But we had enough evidence to make out those charges, as you see the court has, has found in our favor. In your submissions on sentencing, um, one of the things that I haven't heard you say during my few years covering the court, that you said you felt sorry for the defendant. Yeah, because having, having been in that position of trust and to have found yourself 
having to compromise your position. It's a pitiful situation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as a human being, as an ex-police too, I mean, I had, I had some emotions for him, but that didn't prevent me from doing what I was supposed to do robustly. As you know, I'm, I, I prosecute in a very robust fashion, and I did so, even though I had that, that feeling for him. I still had to do what I got to do. And just tell us the sentences that were handed down by the court. Well, I don't have them on the top of my head. I know he was sentenced to one year, 11 months for one, and one year plus for the other. But the sentences will be running concurrently, so he'll be doing the one year, 11 months, which is the, one, the heavier one. And, and can you emphasize for, for our viewers the gravity of the charge in terms of the prisoner that uh, Mr. Cupid allowed to escape? Yeah, well, I think that, that, was, that, the, that was the most aggravating part of it. Now, Veron Primus, as we know, is on remand here for murder, to the capital offense. And he is wanted in the US also for murder and kidnapping. Now, that in and of itself is, is a very serious situation. To have such a person in your custody and to be conspiring with him, because the court has found that he has conspired, to, to let him out has to be very serious. I mean, that sent, when, I remember when Veron was escaping for speech, and that sent panic to the state of Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Everybody was on edge. It was a very frightening situation because of the, the, the man himself and the offences for which he is there for. Tell us a little bit about this note that Sergeant Duncan uh, recorded that the court, the, the Crown relied heavily on. Well, based on the evidence that came out from Sergeant Duncan, he was part of the team of investigators. And we know Sergeant Duncan. I always give him props because, in my view, he is the best investigating the police force. That is my personal view. And I'm entitled to that. And he has this way that people always want to speak to him. I know a couple of people in the past who are like that. Ex-Inspector Caesar, ex-ASP James, you know, they have that charisma that people always want to talk, suspects always want to talk to them. And it, 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 the evidence came out that the accused just approached him and said, Officer Duncan, I want to tell you the truth. And he just went ahead and spoke freely to Duncan. And Duncan, of course, would have cautioned him and, and made a record that is telling. What did he say in that in that scene? In that, Can you remember? I, I can't remember it everything now. But parts of it, he said that, okay, I'm telling the truth. He said, I did assist Veron, but I didn't give him a positive answer. And the night of the Christian, when he said Veron was ready to move, he said, well, you could go, but you're on your own. And then he asked, Veron asked him if he could go through something there. He said, no, you can't go through there because officers are there. So, but you could go, you're on your own. Those are just parts of it. Right? There are more detailed things that he would have said in that note. Now, come on, you're in a position of trust. A man is telling you. You have a duty to make sure this man doesn't escape. He's telling you he's going and you're telling him, okay, you're on your own. 